Andy Stanley, a, a famous American preacher, has decided to, to create the Unconditional Conference in Georgia, where it provides support and resources for parents who are who have LGBTQ children or LGBTQ children themselves. Is this crazy? Am, am I living in the right times? Am I bugging out? Like, what is going on here? I want to share my opinions. I want to share my thoughts when it comes to this particular conference. Let's talk. While I have your attention, don't forget to like, subscribe. Thank you for your love lately. Don't forget, thank you for supporting. Thank you for your comments and conversations. I really, really, really appreciate you guys. But let's continue to get this word out. Share. Uh, but let's talk. Listen. So this is something that is very perplexing. So Andy Stanley, Andy Stanley is a very well-known preacher um, throughout the world. His father, Charles Stanley. Uh, who recently passed away w was also one of one of the most well known and influential pastors in church history. He, um, Andy Stanley, is known for being very radical, very forward thinking, thinking outside the box when it comes to ministry. Um, and his, he has decided that he would like to create. Um, What's the word? How you call it? The Unconditional Conference. It's a two-day event, September 28th, 29th, for parents of LGBTQ children and for ministry leaders looking for to, to discover ways to support parents and LGBTQ children in their churches. Stanley's also one of the speakers of this conference. I, I'm all for being relatable. I'm all for being inclusive. But I also think we're getting a little bit too far. The one thing about the church, the church has to be different. The church has to be set apart. The church has to, there, there's certain things we should not find in the church. If parents need that type of support, they are, they are more than welcome to look for it out in the world. But there is no need for the church to be taking part in this. Because what you're doing is saying that this type of behavior is okay. And, and we are called to love anyone that, that lives that LGBTQ lifestyle. That we are called to love. We can't tolerate. We can say, I love you. But listen, your lifestyle is not in accordance with, with what scripture says. I know people are going to be saying, ah, oh, uh, that it's a man-made Bible. The Bible is antiquated, blah, 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 blah. We, I, stand by scriptures. The scriptures um, do not change. The scriptures are inspired by God. So according to scriptures, this lifestyle is not in alignment with what God wants for us. But I still love you. I'm going to still pray for you. I'm going to still, you know, be there for you. And, 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 you know, but in terms of creating um, a platform for this type of behavior, that is totally unacceptable. Again, Andy is, is, is really good for being forward thinking and thinking of uh, things on a macro level in a broader picture. But I think this is a bit too far. This is a bit too much. We can't sit to me. If I would have an LGBTQ conference, it'll be a deliverance conference. It'll be one where I'm gonna sit here trying to get that demon out of you. It's one saying, listen, I love you, but you, you ain't gonna stay this way. It's one where where my prayer is gonna be, listen, you, you, you're gonna identify who God says you are. I'm not gonna sit here and try to help you navigate through this life. Then why would you ever leave the life? If you're finding ways in the church to sit here and navigate things and, and you know, figure things out, then how would you ever leave this life? 
again, I it's it's not a a knock on the individuals, but it's a knock on the church. To to go even one step further, you have um you have uh speakers are pe people from the LGBTQ community. What are you gonna teach? Hey, this is okay. Here's how you get through this. This is how you feel. I understand you. That's not the message that should come from the church. God, this, this, this is further evidence that we're living in the last days. And that we're sitting here in a place right now where God is on his way and he's coming back soon. And that if we're not careful, we're going to miss out on God. Because the church has become so compromising and so thirsty for being inclusive and being liked and being uh, and fitting in that we sit here and miss out on God that we say I don't want to <clears throat> I don't want to offend anyone I don't want to get anyone mad someone's gonna walk on eggshells why 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 you're not offending anyone you're offending God everyone's happy with your church everyone loves your church everyone's comfortable with their sin and their demons in your church they're being while you're just shutting God out so this behavior, this is this is scary, and I'm afraid. I'm a, a, I'm I'm just very alarmed at the fact of how the church is softening its stance on its LGBTQ because of a desire to be liked and and to have more dollars come in. Where the church is scared to be canceled. Cancel me. I'm gonna stand on the word of God. You could. Not like me, you can unfollow, you can try to try to report me, do what you can, but I am going to stand on the word of God. But we have leaders who are more afraid, more, more concerned about their popularity than his presence. They're more concerned about, about being liked and being popular and being loved and being invited to conferences and on podcasts than sitting here and making sure that you um, love the word of God and follow the word of God. I'd rather have his presence than popularity. I'd rather have his presence than likes. So this, this right here is alarming. And, and this is just another example of the church sitting here and embracing the world and compromising because a they're afraid to be canceled, because they want to make sure that they have it, it won't affect their bottom line, and people will still come to the church and give and tithe and sow. They want to still get invited to these speaking engagements, but at the mean at the entire time you're shutting God out. I remember somebody telling me a story one time about how they they were invited to to, to speak at a conference, and they were they were forced to sign a contract saying. Prior to speaking, saying that, that you you cannot speak against LGBTQ. You are not allowed to talk about that topic. Why? Because there are many folks who are in that lifestyle, who are in the church, who are faithful members, faithful givers. They sow in every project. So the pastor, like, listen, I'm, I'm trying to make sure my, my bottom line is not affected. I don't know what, what, what Andy Stanley is doing here, but I think... I, I think either way is dangerous. It could be at a place, maybe he has good intention. He thinks just doing this and being inclusive is a good thing. But it, but the church is, is not a, a community group. The church is a place where, you, we are, where it's created for you to, to, to find God. The church is not a hangout. It's not a social gathering. The church is a place where you find God. Where you are taught the principles of God, you taught the word of God, you are told what God has told has called you to do. So we can't sit here and allow ourselves to continue to um, compromise. So when I read this article, when I heard about this, I was shocked. And it, and the scary part is this this guy Andy Andy Stanley. And, you know, Jamal Bryant, who apologized to the LGBT community. These are the guys with influence. So they think if Jamal Bryant could do it, then I could do it. If Andy Stan does it, then I can do it. 
We have to do better as a church and stay on the principles of God. So tell me what you think. Am I being extra? Am I being too much? Leave a comment, like, subscribe. Thank you for watching. God bless you. I love you. Peace.